everybody and welcome to my channel so today we are doing my june june manga reading log yay we're at the halfway point of the year who's excited not me but it's okay because we have manga so um this time i actually have the physicals for the ones i read because last month i did not have the physicals so you know we're already improving episode by episode so um we have them sitting here this is your little preview of what's to come just like last time we'll talk about completed ongoing things i dropped and things like that so grab a snack and get ready there will be time stamps left down below so that you can jump around because i'm sure you don't want to hear me ramble about every single series i have to talk about so you can just click around and let's get started with completed series so the first series and only series that i actually completed this month is I Want to Eat Your Pancreas. Um, I completed it, like I said. So this is a rather short read. It's only this one single chunky omnibus. It was technically collected into two volumes originally in Japan, I believe, but in the English, it is just this one thing and it is 10 chapters, so it is a very quick read. Basically, we follow our unnamed protagonist who is pretty reserved and stays to himself. He doesn't have very many friends in school, but he does come across the more bubbly friendly girl named Sakura, who he meets in a hospital and turns out that she actually has a terminal pancreatic disease, which is giving her a deadline of about a year left to live. And he's the only one that actually knows the secret at the school. And she wants to keep it that way because she wants to live her life to the fullest and not have all her friends worry about her and things like that and so they just have this really quick blossoming friendship relationship that spans for 10 chapters and i just think this was a very beautiful very beautifully written story i really enjoyed it i really enjoy quick blossoming romance type of things it kind of reminds me of like summer love you know like that person you meet for the summer break for a couple months and then like that's the end of it obviously this comes to an end in a very more depressing way obviously considering the summary but i think that it still holds the same elements and i really enjoy that so i really recommend this it's a very quick it is a very emotional read but it's very very worth it i think i'm going to talk about a few spoilers because it is so short I think mostly anything you say about the story is a spoiler, so um, you have been warned. I'm going to talk about spoilers. Two things that I really love that the series does is that I really love the way that the two title or the main characters do not define their relationship at any point. Like they never come out and say that they're boyfriend and girlfriend or anything like that. It has a lot to do with the fact that they both know that there's not enough time left in the life for them to define their relationship especially like when things would come to an end so quickly but i really enjoyed that aspect of it and i think it's so beautiful to see their like deep emotional bond there wasn't very many physically intimate moments for them but a lot of emotional moments and i love towards the end when she when he's reading her will and it turns out that they both really really wanted to be like each other like she really admired how straightforward and like realistic he is but he also admired how optimistic and very like just not so cynical she was and i just love to see characters who love each other in that way you know the second thing i really like is actually the way that she passed i know it's a bit of a controversial thing personally i don't really like the health tropes that go on like i don't really like watching a character becomes sick and dying in the hospital so the way that she died is good in that regard because i didn't really want to see it come down to that and i was super super worried that it was going to be like that when she was in the hospital for that long towards the end i was getting very nervous about that but on the other hand a lot of people think that it felt kind of cheap because it came out of nowhere but that's kind of how life is like people die you never know so I think that one of the big messages is to like live life to the fullest and just live every day like it's your last. And these 10 chapters were absolutely phenomenal. I'm super happy to have it on my shelf. 
I will definitely be revisiting this at some point in my manga reading career and I highly recommend. <laughs> the first in progress series that I read, um, I think this is the largest binge I did this month and that is Dr. Stone. All these ones from 10 to 20 I read because my original plan with Dr. Stone was to collect from the end of the second season of the anime which was around chap um, volume 10 but volumes 10 and I mean not 10 but 11 and 12 have been out of stock for a really long time so that's why I took so long to finally jump on the hype train but they finally came back in stock and I'm so excited and honestly the wait was well worth it I love Dr. Stone might be one of my top shonen series ever because I'm not a big shonen person. So our story follows a dystopian world where the earth was shot by this really strange beam that ended up petrifying the entirety of humanity into stone and the earth kind of sat this way for about thousands of years until our protagonist Senku finally broke out of his petrification stone and he set off on a mission to revive earth to its former glory in terms of like science and technology he is very passionate about science and wants to bring the earth back and he meets a lot of fun friends along the way he revives some fun people along the way and he just creates this like little society of science to accomplish his goals and i just find it to be a very like inspirational really fun series the art in the manga is also super stunning like a lot of the backgrounds are super detailed and I can tell that Boichi spends a lot of time thinking of how he would envision the earth to look like if you know we were petrified for thousands of years and humanity didn't destroy the earth as much as we do now how it would kind of revert back to the stone age type of setting with all the trees and just absolutely gorgeous settings that he draws. So one of my favorite arcs has definitely been the Treasure Island arc, which is the one that directly follows the end of season two of the anime, which means it'll be in season three of the anime and I'm so excited. We're also getting a Rusui um, special very soon. It might be out by the time this video gets uploaded, but it's not out at the time of filming. So I hope you guys are excited. Rusui is one of my favorite characters. Um, my number one favorite character is definitely Senku. I'm obsessed with Senku. He's just so great. I love how he has all the qualities that could make him into like a crazy mad evil scientist, but he doesn't he doesn't do that cuz he actually doesn't care about much besides science. Obviously, he cares about his friends and things like that, but he doesn't care a lot about anything besides science, and I love that. And I do love that he does care for his friends and his teammates, and he does show emotion towards his loved ones. Like all the moments where he becomes super emotional are ones that really tug at the heartstrings for me the most. Specifically, um, a moment with his dad and a moment with another person. It was at the end of season two of the anime. So, you know what I'm talking about if you watched, but it's so good. And I do think the anime is a very good adaptation. I'm kind of talking out of my ass because I didn't read the parts that were in it, like the anime. But I think that the vibes are very similar, so I don't think you will go wrong if you just decide to watch the anime. Especially considering we are getting a season 3, so hopefully the whole series will eventually be adap adapted, which would be amazing. So, yeah, I love Dr. Stone, and I highly recommend... I, I know we're boiling down towards the end, I know it's gonna end in 26 volumes, and I will say that I don't feel like it's dragged on very much, like I think the pacing is very nice and the improvements that we're making make a lot of sense like i think the trips that we're taking and stuff like that are really going in the right direction and I f i'm very happy to know that i feel like the author likely ended the series where he wanted to instead of pushing it forward for like popularity or money reasons or anything like that so i'm really excited to see how it ends up wrapping up we won't get that in the US for quite a while. Volume 22 comes out in July. And I think maybe like every other month the rest of them will come. So maybe by the beginning to middle of 2023 we will see the end. 
And stay tuned for my thoughts on that because I might make a whole video about Dr. Stone because that's how much I love it. I do want to talk about another thing about Dr. Stone that's like, has not that much to do with the series. It has more to do with the fandom. Um, shipping. I'm not a big shipper. Like, I don't go out of my way to ship. Like, if the evidence is there, then obviously I'm going to take advantage of it. But other than that, I don't really like, I don't reach that far for my, my ships. So... For me personally, I feel like Senku is more of like an arrow ace type of character, which I like that for the hashtag representation. You know, it's Pride Month, okay? Senku, my ace king, but I, I'm open to other possibilities and a specific ship that's really stood out to me has been Senku and Gen. Um, I was on YouTube one day and I came across a one of those like YouTube videos where they like put the comic and they put music behind it. You know those videos? I came across one for Senku and Gen, and I watched it, and you know what? The comic was good. So then I went to the original artist's page, and I looked at all their comics, and you know what? Like, points were made. Like, if you ship Senku and Gen, like, you are so valid. Like, I get it. I personally don't think I ship them, but like, I get it. Like, it makes so much sense to me. So, I just wanted to point that out. Also, like, I'm pretty open to the idea of Senku and Kohaku as well. Um, there's a few moments in the Treasure Island arc where I'm like, oh, they're cute. I love them together. But obviously, Senku doesn't really reciprocate. I don't think she even has, like, real romantic feelings for him. I, did think, I think that she just really admires him. And sometimes that can be perceived as having romantic feelings for him. But I like their dynamic. And I love Senku's dynamic with every character. I think every character has a very unique relationship with Senku, and I actually adore that. And that's why I love Dr. Stone. It's a very character-driven series, I feel. So if you are somebody who really likes your characters to be unique and different, I think that this is the series for you. The next series in progress we will be discussing today is something I do not have the physicals for. And to be honest, I probably will never get the physicals for this, but it is Dengeki Daisy. I do think I need a little bit of exposition before we get into Dengeki Daisy. Um, I am not one who typically seeks out more taboo romances. Um, last month we spoke about Shugokara and I talked about how, you know, like, I love the series as a kid. There's a lot of nostalgia factors towards the series for me, but I really hated Amu and Ikuto's relationship because she is an elementary school kid and he is a high schooler. However, I think I can push through the series just because it's not, like, the main plot point. You can hear more of my thoughts on Shugo Kata in the previous manga reading log. I don't want to spend too much time on that. But yeah, another taboo romance or another series that has the taboo romance intertwined into it that I can still push through is Vampire Knight. Like, I mean, through most of the anime, you don't know that she's siblings with him. So like in that regard, it's fine. But overall, I enjoy Zero a lot as a character. So his relationship with her and like his character development in general is more than enough for me to push through the series. Um, to be fair, it's kind of like a guilty pleasure thing anyways. Like I don't have very high opinions on Vampire Night. Um, I clearly can't seem to keep the series out my mouth, but you know, let's move on. So I'm saying all this to say that I don't typically reach out to things like Dengeki Daisy, which is an age gap romance, but Shoujo is just like riddled with age gaps in some regard like I feel like any series you go to with Shoujo will have an age gap whether it be with a side character or like something there's an age gap involved at some capacity so like it's just something you kind of I wouldn't say accept but like you get I don't want to say you get used to it because we, we really should not be getting used to age gaps but you know, if you're a shoujo enjoyer, you know what I mean, so. Um, everyone talks about Dengeki Daisy, like, it's one of the top shoujo series, so I decided to give it a try, like I said. So, the series follows our main girl, her name's Teru, she is an orphan, and her brother had recently died, so she's all by herself. But before her brother died, he entrusted her with a cell phone that gives her the contact information to Daisy. And she doesn't know anything about Daisy besides, like, the, f the person in the phone. And she texts him and confides in him and is he is somebody that is very important to her um while she's at school one day the janitor ends up she ends up becoming indebted to the janitor and does a lot of work with him his name's kurosaki and you'll never guess 
he's Daisy. Kurosaki, the janitor, is Daisy. And so he's living this like double life with her. And it's this whole thing. And there's a lot of mystery surrounding like her brother's death, Daisy. Daisy's a like computer hacker guy. And like they ran this tech company back in the day. So there's a lot of things with that that add more detail to the story. I will say again, if you are uncomfortable with age gaps, like, uh, don't even bother with the series. Like, I do think it was quite entertaining and I enjoyed it for what I read, but I don't think it's good enough to go against your morals and read age gaps. If you're one of those people that it needs to be handled well, Teru and Kurosaki don't really get that deep as far as how much I read. I will say that I feel like towards about like the middle, like around chapter 40-ish, we've already resolved the main conflict. So I'm low-key bored of it. I might drop it. I like, after I read through the main resolution I cared about, I haven't even thought about picking it up again. So I might consider this dropped. It was kind of fun while it lasted, but it's like once we figured out the solution to some things, now they're kind of pushing towards of the relationship and they want to define it more and that's when they kind of lost me because I don't I don't want to see them date or anything. If he was a little bit younger then yeah, I would be interested in seeing them date, but I don't know. Don't 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 make me read another age gap, guys. I don't think I can do it again. But I I had fun while it lasted, so I don't really regret reading it, but yeah. The next series in progress for this month, which is something I spoke about last month as well, that is Fruits Basket. Um, I read all of this one and a little bit of Omnibus number three. I'm really enjoying reading this slowly. I think I'm gonna stick to about one Omnibus a month. It'll probably pick up as we get closer towards like when plot points start like developing quicker. But as of right now, it's more of more chill, more slow, and I really enjoy it at the pace I'm reading right now. I don't have very much, nothing like super crazy or something that stood out very much to me in this omnibus. It's just some good thrills. I love Yuki. Every day I grow closer to becoming a Yuki defender. That's all I have to say about Fruits Basket, I guess. Stay tuned for me to talk about it more. It is definitely one of my favorite series right now. Everything's my favorite series because I have very low standards for things. Not to say that this is bad, but you know like... I'll probably say anything I read is my recent favorite because I just love things so much. But one thing I want to talk about is that, like I said, I'm reading it quite slowly. I'm so curious as to what you guys think of this. So I feel like if this was a series that was releasing weekly, I would be reading it weekly with the releases because it's something where a chapter is very nice and I feel like they, they like introduce a concept and solve it within the chapter and the chapters are quite thick. So it's worth reading a chapter a day or a chapter a week or whatever. But last month I spoke about Tokyo Avengers, which is like, not to be redundant, but it actually is my favorite series right now. So despite that, I can't see myself reading the chapters weekly, especially the ones that are coming out now because they're just so short. But you know what, they come out weekly. So I was wondering if you guys think that this is like a difference between shoujo and shonen or if it's like a difference between old and new because the industry is so much more faster paced than it used to be so maybe chapters have to be punched out quicker but i think it's definitely old versus new rather than shonen versus shoujo it might i feel like shoujos don't release as frequently i don't have i don't, i'm not reading any shoujo as they're releasing in japan so i have nothing to base it off of but i'm curious to hear your thoughts on this topic Fruits Basket. <laughs> Great series, guys. <laughs> so next series in progress is actually my only LGBT series for the month. I really did want to incorporate more LGBT stories for Pride Month, but I realized I don't actually own that many like stories where LGBT characters or representation is like in the forefront of the plot. Mostly just like side characters or things like that. So this was the only one I had with me and I'm like kind of on a buying hiatus. So I'll definitely be incorporating more into my catalog as things progress. Cause I do have some on my list of things I want to pick up, but you'll have to wait to hear about that. Anyways, so I read Boys Wonder Wyatt. 
was run the riot. Words are hard. And I love it so far. So our story follows our protagonist, Ryo, um, who is a transgender boy. He's very uncomfortable with his school uniform, but he does see fashion as an outlet to express himself and things like that. So he runs into one of his classmates who's kind of like a delinquent guy. His name's Jin and they both end up realizing they both have this very common trait of enjoying fashion so they decide to open a fashion brand together and there's a lot of people that they've like well i say a lot but i think that the story is going to go on this route of like introducing a lot of different like outcasts at school who are going to join the team of boys from the riot and help them create their brand and i think that that's going to be super fun to watch or super fun to read about so i'm really excited to pick up more of these I know that it only goes for four volumes, which is kind of sad because I think the story premise is something that could go on for a really long time. So we'll see how it goes. I will definitely be picking up volumes two through four and we'll definitely be talking about it on the channel. So stay tuned. I love it. I think that it's so inspirational. I just love reading like young people following their dreams and stuff. So I really think that this is something that literally anybody and everyone should pick up and read about because I think Ryo is also a really a good character to see inside of like how it may feel to be trans and I think that that's something that a lot of people need to have empathy towards so I think this would be a really good introduction for that and obviously I think fashion is something that a lot of people can relate to as well putting these two things together is super cool so I recommend this to everyone you don't have to like specific things to like this. I think everyone should give this a try, so. The last in progress series for this month is Blue Period. We read volumes one and two. If you go back on my channel, I definitely spoke about volume one in a pre, not the last reading log, but like a couple reading logs be before that, I had purchased this and read it. Um, and then I bought this one, but it got stuck in a write stuff package for six months. So I'm only just not getting around to it. And I feel like that time period has really like waned my interest in it. So yeah, I'm not sure how I feel about Blue Period. But our synopsis is basically that we have our protagonist guy who is kind of just an average guy. Like he gets good grades, he goes to school, hangs out with his friends. And his goal in life is to pretty much just go to college, get a regular job and work regularly, make money, just given to capitalism but one day he comes across his senpai's painting in the art room and is just so enthralled by how intricate and beautiful it is so then he decides that he actually wants to try to pursue art and it is his journey of developing his skills and going to prep schools and preparing his resume so that he can try to apply to an art university because it is extremely difficult to get into the one public art university in Tokyo so that is the synopsis it's good like don't get me wrong I think that the story is very good but I just I can't find myself developing a strong connection but I've been thinking and I feel like it might be just me subconsciously not allowing myself to enjoy things because I feel like the story is too relatable and hits a little too close to home except like he's so much younger and like has so much more flexibility in changing his career path i don't have that luxury these days so i'm a bit envious of him in some ways and i'm envious of people like him in my life so i think that is a big thing that keeps me from enjoying it however i did end up picking up volume three i don't have it with me but i do own it so i just slowly pick up volumes as i see fit and slowly read them in hopes that it will help me get over my own troubles in life and i think if it can do that then it will be a really excellent series to have and to read but if you are a like young person struggling with your passions in life i do think that this is a good series and i do recommend it so the last series we'll be discussing today is the one and only series i dropped this month well technically i guess i'll be dropping dengeki daisy probably but like yeah, 
So the only series I dropped this month was Mamote Lollipop. The reason I picked it up is because I was watching a shoujo collector's manga collection and I saw that they had Mamote Lollipop on their shelf. And then I just kind of remembered it existed. I remember mildly enjoying the anime as a kid, so I decided to just, you know, check out a couple chapters on the internet. And wouldn't you know it, I see why I only mildly enjoyed it as a kid, and I see why I never collected the manga as a kid as well. So basically our story follows our main girl, her name's Nina. She's just a regular human, but she ends up swallowing a magic pearl that is very important to a magic exam in the wizarding world. So these two boys named Zero and Ichi come down and are sworn to protect her for six months so that they can pass their magic exam. And it's just kind of like a damsel in distress type of thing. Like there's some wizards that come to try to take her because she becomes synonymous with the pearl. So like if they take her, then she, they have the pearl in their position. So a lot of people come to try to steal her, but then Zero and Ichi come and save the day. And that's basically the storyline. I think that there's supposed to be some romance elements, but they're not developing very quickly for me. And yeah, it's a typical love triangle thing because we have our hot headed boy, which is zero and then we have a more calm cool collected guy that's ichi but yeah the reason i dropped it is there was a very very weird incest plot line that added nothing to the story and it really annoyed me because like there was no redeeming factors to the story already and then you do that so i ended up dropping it i do not recommend the story i don't recommend it in any capacity there's literally no redeeming factor the only thing i recommend is to go take a look at the manga covers because they're quite pretty i think the artist has a really great command of colors and it's really nice to look at and that's about it <laughs> but yeah that is the end of the manga reading log for the month of june i hope you enjoyed I feel like there was a good variety of things I really enjoyed, things I really despised. So, you know, I hope you enjoyed the roller coaster that came with that. Um, comment down below what you've been reading lately. I'm super interested to hear what series that have been hooking you guys, and I love to have a conversation with you guys. But yeah, leave a like if you enjoyed, and subscribe for more manga content because I love making manga content these days.